Welcome into another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. We got a conversation that you probably don't want to hear, but you have to. That's the bad news. The good news is we're going to make it easy for you. We're going to talk about finances and why money's not the problem, but maybe you are. It's okay. It's okay. We're going to we're going <laughs> to lay this on nice and easy today. I have an awesome guest lined up. Uh, we're going to bring him on in just a second, but Let's ground real quick in the architecture, Harmonious. It is the 10 fundamental business disciplines that you need to know, but not only know, you need to master and leverage in order to grow and scale your business. So today we're talking about money. Where does money fall in the architecture? Honestly, I have no idea. We're going to find out. We don't put finance as one of the 10 disciplines, but it's usually going to fall in rad, risk, and defense. Uh, maybe a little bit in metrics, which would be the A for analyze. So We'll see where the conversation ties in. We'll wrap that in at the end of the conversation here. But for now, let's bring on our awesome guest, Wade. Welcome to the show. So good to have you here. Thank you, Brandon. Glad to be here. Yeah, I'm excited to talk about this topic. So the uh, let me read it here. The, the episode title that you put in, I don't want to get it wrong, is Money is Not the Problem You Think It Is. I hinted that you might be the problem. We're sorry for you listening out there watching. Um, tell me a little bit about what you do first, and then we'll really insult people about their money. Yeah, thanks, Brandon. So I've been in the financial services industry for about two decades now. Um, I found a passion for personal finance in 2005 when I took a class with my wife. And uh, in that class, I realized that there were so many people who were pretty clueless about money. And although I wasn't that far ahead, I was familiar with the topics. And so my work today is to help make what appears to be very complex, the space of personal finance and business finance, very simple and fun. Yeah, that's, you know, that's interesting that you say fun because a lot of people, if they have money, it's fun. If they don't have money, it's not fun. And if they don't mm -hmm. know how to manage it, it's definitely not fun um, because it. they probably don't have any. But that's, I, I love that you, you have this ambition to make it fun, at least. And I'm sure you do that for your clients. But tell me, so over the last two decades, how has this come about for you and, and for your clients? What it's, what's some of the, the ways you take your clients through making money fun? Yeah. Uh, so let me just give you an example. I had a, a client I was speaking with yesterday. We were in a joint meeting uh, with some other peers, and she just said to the group, Wade has been a game changer in our life. He came to us as a coach during a time when our business was right on the cusp of failure and uh, helped coach us through the emotional distress that we were experiencing, got us through the, the knowledge of what our finances actually looked like so that we knew what we could do. and as we worked through that process, it actually became fun. And that's been an unintentional outcome for me. Like by nature, I'm more of a, a serious kind of nerdy type guy, but I like to have fun. I mean, there's no doubt about that. But the topic of money tends to be so serious because it's so emotionally charged that um, the byproduct I found accidentally from working with so many clients is that they said that money was actually fun for them. Now that they understood it well, and they had my four key steps figured out. We got them organized. We got them systemized. We got an, um, things optimized in their life. Once you're organized and systemized, you can see errors where things could be improved and, and made even better. So that's optimization. And then fourth component is maximize. And that's an acronym, awesome. O-S-O-M, pronounced awesome. So I have this system for money that I, that I say, look, if you want to become awesome with money, we need to do these four key things. And so that background started in 2005 when I was with my wife in that class I mentioned a few minutes ago, where I was dumbfounded by how many people were clueless about money and not that I was that much further ahead, but that I, I had been familiar with. I had run a lawn business. I had been a paper boy. I learned about accounting from that. I had a bank account that I managed. I had an allowance that I managed. I had new earnings of my own that I managed. I had client and customer acquisition and sales and, and marketing and, and the collections of those things and I needed to manage all those things. I had a mutual fund when I was a kid that my parents had put together for me that I actually read a prospectus when I was 17 years old. Talk How about fun reading. Is that, right? <laughs> that was the lamest thing I've ever read in my life, but I saw two numbers. One, a historical trend of an upward growth in that mutual fund. And then the second thing I saw on every page was past performance is not indicator of future performance but I didn't know what that actually meant at 17 years old. So I put five grand in that thing. And a couple of years later, 9-11 happened and I lost most of the money that I put in there. Hmm. So that's kind of the backstory about where I've come from, what I do, 
um, with my clients. And it's really a, a lot about organization and systemization of money that makes the clarity happen so that ease and fun can exist on that topic. Yeah, I love that. You're, you're speaking our language. Ease and fun, something we definitely try to involve in, in when we consult businesses because it's our belief that business should be fun. Money should be fun. I completely agree with you. If you don't have fun and you let the stress build up and the anxiety over things, it just ultimately results in failure. Whatever it is, it could be business, money, life. It doesn't matter. You, you have to have that element of fun there. I love that you bring that out in your clients. Um, you did not tell me, that, however, before the show that we were going to have an acronym battle. We have Harmonious. You have Awesome. I'm excited to dive into Awesome and, and hear a little bit more about that. Um, but so tell me, can we start with the O and, and the process you take your clients through? Let's go through this acronym and, and see if we can break down how we look oh, at yeah. money and, and ultimately why it's not the problem you think it is. Yeah. So O is about getting organized. And part of getting organized is looking at how we think about money. Most of us have these belief systems that money is maybe evil. It's the root of all evil. Rich people are greedy. You know, if I'm successful, I might lose my friends or family. And there might be some truth to that at times. But there's also this beautiful truth that those who are wealthy and successful are also among the most generous people on the planet. The philanthropy that exists among them, the the water services that are happening across the world, the, the vaccinations that might be happening in third world countries to eliminate malaria and other diseases, polio and things that have become uh, a reality because of entrepreneurship and business ownership and leading those types of things. So there's there may be truth on both sides, but a lot of us have a negative belief about money. And when we look at our thinking, then we can start to recognize the emotional reactions we're having to those thoughts that are filtered through some form of belief. Oftentimes it's a limiting belief that causes us to have these negative emotions around money. Then our actions around money become negative. We might hide from money. We might be neglectful. We might be wasteful. We might just purely uh, want to hide from it. And thereby the results we're getting are negative. We might be building up debt on credit cards. We might have car loans outstanding. We might have student loans that haven't been paid off yet. Or we're not sure how we're going to do that. And so we end up in this spiral. So that too is an acronym, T-E-A-R, thoughts, emotions, actions, and results. So the first part of organization is to get clear on what our thinking looks like so that we can start to observe what's happening with our money. And part of that requires that we look at our income and then our expenses. If we're willing to be honest with ourselves, what is our actual gross income from a W-2 wage? Or if you're a small business owner, you might be taking a draw from your business. How much am I actually taking out of the business? or what type of income do I have? What's the total amount? And then what are my actual monthly living expenses? We have to do some sleuthing. Like we have to do some analysis on this. We cannot get away without doing this. Otherwise we'll constantly be in debt and constantly be in fear and worry. But if you're willing to do the work of three months of the past history, maybe even up to a year if you have that much data, look at what the average is on a monthly basis so you know exactly where you are. And then you can know exactly what you can change. And we want to align our spending behavior, the expenses we have in life, with the things that matter most to us. So, for example, if you really value nice dinners out, build that into a proactive spending plan. If you really like to go on certain types of trips, build that in. If you like to have a certain type of car, build that in. Be proactive about it. And so when we're organized, we're clear on what our income is, our expenses are. We have our values figured out. We know what our thinking and beliefs are around money. And then we can have clarity, which brings confidence. Clarity brings confidence. And that feeling of positive emotion around money is why I said money really isn't the problem that we think it is. It's, and you said it right. It's really the individual and being willing to take a look at what we know or don't know. Be willing to open up some books like the ones I have on my shelf, if you can see those. right? Books are so powerful in engaging our minds and learning. We learn principles that are successful for different types of uh, types and ways of life, I guess. The entrepreneur will do things a little bit differently than somebody who's working for somebody as a W-2 wage earner. And so the, the system then needs to be put in place accordingly. So we then build a system after we get organized. Yeah, that's so that's interesting. Something that comes up for me in organization, and I'm curious about your thoughts on this. You said the beliefs around money, and obviously that's super important. Um, 
you definitely need to dive into your beliefs around money first. But I've always, I've always loved the analogy that money is not really an object. It's more of an emotion. So do you, in the belief section and in, in organize, do you spend time disconnecting emotion from money and how people feel about it? Or do you leverage that and just make sure it's a positive, helpful emotion? So it's really a both answer, I would say. Uh, we have to recognize the emotion. There, there are therapists out there, and I'm not one of them, but I've studied enough content to know that emotions that are built up have to be fully felt in order for us to neutralize them. So mm -hmm. oftentimes an emotion will come up and bring up a strong feeling. And oftentimes we try to then suppress that. If as part of the coaching process that I take clients through and, and your own exploration, you start to have strong emotion, I would do some sort of writing. I often will encourage my clients to do some sort of writing. I feel blank because dot, dot, dot. I'm feeling angry about this situation that I have with money. I'm angry that I have so much debt because. And feel that emotion of the anger that's there and write about it. Just drop all the thoughts that come around anger. I feel excited about this opportunity in my life because. And write about it. And fully express the emotion through the writing exercise so that it can then be neutralized. So part of making money fun and easy is that we go through this, this emotional moment where I'm feeling everything and then it's like, oh, I felt it and it just kind of dissipates kind of in an argument scenario. When you actually empathize with somebody in an argument, instead of getting it higher and higher and higher, you just say, oh my gosh, I so hear what you're saying there. I can totally get why you'd be feeling that way. Right. The, the emotion dissipates. It's like, oh, I've actually been heard. It's like that emotion needs to be heard. We need to empathize with the emotion that's come up. And in doing so, we neutralize it. And then we can start to re-experience money in a new way, which often becomes fun and easy and exciting. Yeah, that's a great analogy. And something that I uh, that also just came up when you were describing that is uh, a guest on this show would have been a few a few months ago at this point um, was about about your mindset. And it wasn't around money, but around past traumas and how they come up and, and it affects the way you perceive your life and your business and why it's holding you back. And something that resonates with that conversation and this one is if you're the way you brought it up, if you're if you have that anger and you just kind of push it down and suppress it or or fear, whatever it is, whatever that negative emotion is, it's almost like building a house on a sinkhole, right? It's like the ground looks level it could collapse at any moment. So if you don't do that work, you're just opening yourself up for failure. No matter how good you get with money, that is always going to be a threat that it could come collapsing Baggage. down. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that void underneath what appears to be a solid foundation is not really solid. Yeah. You yeah. That's it. okay. That's, that's really interesting. It's a interesting place to start with money. I don't, I don't think I hear a lot of people who specialize in the money, um, industry if you will talk about that in terms of eliminating those bad beliefs rebuilding new ones so i love that you start there now in terms of the s and systemizing things what does that look like when you work with your clients yeah so i'll i'll bring to light the organizational system that needs to exist so let's imagine on the right hand side you have some business activity over here you have income coming into a business account and then you have expenses going out and you might have a couple of different savings accounts, like a tax savings account and an emergency fund, what I often call a war chest. Mm -hmm. You know, all of us in business need to have some sort of war chest. And that language comes out of literally the days when wars were occurring. They would take a chest of jewels and valuables so that they could buy the supplies they needed. They had a war chest that they took along with them. We need that as business owners. So you have some organization to your accounts on the right hand side, and then on the left hand side, money's flowing over our personal lives. And more often than not, it's passing through to a checking account. Almost always is what I see through direct deposit, through payroll deduction, uh, sorry, uh, from your payroll provider, from either your business activity or your employer. And so money flows into this uh, checking account and then it just dissipates, uh, disappears through our expenses. We have all these automated expenses that, that take our money away. It's kind of like cash in our pocket. Any of you who still carry cash around, and I still have great value for cash, I think it's pretty cool to have cash in my pocket. I can just pass off to somebody if I feel inclined to for a purchase or for a gift. But cash, more often than not, has this sense of it needs to be spent. 
it's ready, it's accessible. And in a checking account, that's often what I've seen my clients experience is that it's all readily accessible and supposed to be spent. So the system that I shift is that we, we change the order of operations from uh, checking account to possibly saving. We move it to saving and then checking. So we change the flow from our business activity over to our personal life through what I call a clearing account. So the system includes this temporary holding place for all of our cash where we as the owner of that cash, the effort that we put in, the value that we provided, the solutions that we provided, the service that we provided, that was valuable to our customers, to our clients, to our employer. And as a result of that, we have this cash. So it sits in this separate account, what I call this clearing account that acts as a temporary holding place. So we could acknowledge that we actually earned that money. That's mine. All of it is mine. And so I'm going to be very careful and scrupulous about what I spend it on. It matters to me that I connect my values with what I'm spending my money on. It just doesn't disappear. So I choose the level of internet service I per, the, that I want. Do I need 100 megabits or a full ter uh, gigabit of, of service, right? Do I need a certain type of car? Do I need a certain type of food? Do I need a certain type of clothing? So you align with your values and you automatically move out of that clearing account only what's necessary for your average monthly expenses that I mentioned a few minutes ago, that three months to 12 months worth of analysis that you do. You know what your average is per month and you only move what you need from that clearing account to that checking account. And in doing so, the cash in the pocket syndrome is only the money in the checking account and you automatically are saving all the difference. And so let's say you do pay off a, a loan that you've had, a debt. Now that payment that was automatically coming out of the checking, instead of it um, being spent on lifestyle, it stays in that clearing account because all the money passed through there first and we didn't need to move it that next month for that expense, for that that debt payment, because the debt's gone, now we're keeping everything automatically. And so we see this acceleration of savings. Everyone I talk to moves from about 20, sorry, about 20% increase. They move from maybe zero to 5% savings to up to 30% savings over a couple of years following this system. Wow, that's super powerful. It is and huge. I think the other part too, the, the part where it compounds is you solidified the beliefs. So if you, if you didn't do that, if you, let's say you eliminated that step of the sequence and you just started saving money and spending less, when people have more of it, what do they innately do? If their habits are still the same, well, they just want to put it in other places. Yes. If they didn't have money to spend on, on lifestyle stuff. And then they all of a sudden have $10 extra a month. Guess where it's going? Netflix yeah, immediately. But, Why yeah. would we save it? We can, yeah. we can have Netflix now. How great. Yeah. And so along with the system of the clearing account is a separate account I call the wealth creation money pool. So that just like wrong. a bank, just like a bank has millions of dollars that it gathers through our deposits, we have this clearing account that's been gathering all this surplus cash. And like, well, what do I do with it? Well, I want to siphon off a chunk of that for the sole purpose of wealth building, having money to buy a duplex having money to buy into another business, having money to expand my own business, right? The side hustle turns into something legit and that legit business now has multiple locations or maybe it's expanded from a physical presence to an online presence or vice versa. And now you have legitimacy to this business and you have passive revenues that can come in because you've hired well and you've expanded or you've invested in other things that have passive income. And now there's freedom that's being developed because you actually have the cash to make those wise decisions about those investments. And that right there, I think is how you can make money fun because yeah. ultimately, you know, this is why we don't put finance or the traditional discipline of anything really involving money in the harmonious acronym as a standalone letter, because it shows up in so many different places. I already touched on rad risk and defense and wade said it too if you don't have a war chest if you don't have money set aside for your business you're just opening yourself up to risk and ultimately potential failure it shows up in your metrics but the s in harmonious is really where it shows up a lot and we don't really talk about it but the s stands for serenity and mm -hmm. that is if you don't have the money in your business saved to hire people delegate things, outsource work, and you are trapped in your business and you also can't get out to even fathom growing your business or having more time to yourself and your lifestyle, 
how are you supposed to do anything with your life? You can't save money. You can't set it aside. Yeah. It's one of the most important things in running a business is making sure you're building not only your war chest, but your personal investment fund, your wealth creation machine, like, like Wade said. So um, I love this conversation and I, I think you've opened, you definitely opened my eyes to the way you can make money fun and the process of eliminating those negative beliefs and transitioning to more of a positive relationship with money. Um, we are out of time for this episode, but I know you have two more steps to this framework and I want people to find out about it. So I'm going to put your website on the screen here, moneymasterycoaching.com. Um, where can people connect with you, learn about those last two steps and take that next step to work with you if they need a little bit of help with their money? Yeah, certainly the website will have that information. Uh, I've got a YouTube channel that's being developed right now. I've got a couple of social platforms as well that are being uh, enhanced. I'm on LinkedIn. You know, Feel free to look me up, check me out. I'm happy to chat with anyone. Uh, there is a, I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and there's an application process for that. I've got a, a group training that I'm launching this uh, actually, it's in February or March. I'm not 100% on the dates, but it's it's really close to being ready to be launched. So if you want to be on that wait list, you should be able to find that on the website. That's awesome. Well, whatever Wade just said, well, I'll get with him after this recording. It'll be in the show notes. You'll have all the links you need. If you're watching, listening, just go down there and check it out. Um, I appreciate you as a listener. Wade, I appreciate you. Thank you for coming along and sharing this with us. I think it's very, very valuable conversation that more people need to have. And I know a lot of people don't want to have, as I mentioned in the intro, but seriously, take a look at your finances. If you need any help with this, reach out. This is a conversation that will save you decades of hard work and failure and heartache and could even propel you to a life beyond what you thought was possible in your business, but it is crucial. So take that next step. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Let me try my words again. Thank you for listening and make sure you subscribe wherever you are. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch.